to tonight's virtual meeting of the Port Phillip City Council. The City of Port Phillip respectfully acknowledges the Yalakut Willem clan of the Boomerang. We pay our respects to their elders, both past and present, and we acknowledge and uphold their continuing relationship to this land. Tonight's meeting is being held via the WebEx platform and is being streamed via Council webcast page and Facebook Live. Whilst we have planned for this online meeting, there always remains the risk of technical issues arising that are beyond our control. If we experience technical issues, um, we will adjourn the meeting for a short time and we will try and resolve the issue. If the issue cannot be resolved and the meeting cannot be and the meeting cannot continue, then we'll adjourn to tomorrow evening and the details will be circulated to the public as early as possible. Meeting processes have been altered via resolution of council to hear all submissions from members of the public at the start of the meeting. Additionally, voting on all motions will be under division, where the mayor will call upon councillors individually in rotating alphabetical order to state their vote. Okay, so we'll go to the agenda now, councillors. First up is item number one, which is apologies. And councillors, do we have any apologies? It looks like we're all here, so no apologies tonight. Minutes of the previous meeting is next. Councillors, the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 20th of May 2020 have been circulated. Are there any questions relating to these minutes? I note there are none. So if not, can I have a motion to confirm these minutes, please? Do I have a mover? Councillor Baxter to move. Do I have a seconder? I will second. Now I'm going to put the motion under division in um, an order from where we left off last week and I'm going to call upon each councillor for your vote. First up, Councillor Gross. Uh, in favour. Councillor Pearl. Four. Councillor Simic. Four. Councillor Voss. Four. Councillor Baxter. Four. Councillor Bond. Four. Councillor Brand. Four. Councillor Copsey. Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Thank you, that motion is unanimously carried. I'll move now to declarations of conflicts of interest. And does anyone have a conflict of interest in any matters that we are discussing tonight? I note there are none. Now we'll move to item four on the agenda, which is public question time and submissions. So we'll now hear all public questions and comments on report items from the members of the public. All requests to speak were required to be submitted by 4pm this, this afternoon. At the time of registering to speak, submitters were given the option to join the WebEx meeting virtually and to ask their questions live during the meeting or to have an officer read their statement on their behalf. Statements submitted by members of the public will be read by the Coordinator of Governance. So I'd like now to go to the first one I've got here. I'd like to call upon Lyndon Gasking, who is speaking to item 15.1, which is the notice of motion uh, for the sale of 8 York Street, St Kilda West. Welcome, Lyndon. Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming off mute, just checking. Yes, you are. We can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, yeah, look, what I've just put through is I'm requesting that in event of the sale, because I understand this um, did get up the last being, last being brought back by you um, uh, as another motion again. So there's obviously a persistent want to sell this property. Um, <clears throat> just as a background, uh, I was actually blocked from receiving the report that you used uh, to serve your purpose of actually uh, stating that it was in a state of disrepair and couldn't be reset as a kindergarten. So disappointing that the freedom of information was uh, was be required in a period of time being COVID-19 where we can't go and get community support, can't go and rally um, people in the local area uh, to ensure that we've actually got a building for the purpose of serving three and four olds as we uh, with Capital Works, et cetera, various 
um, kindergarten area. I'm obviously concerned about the middle part of kindergarten, but I'm sure you know, the Kilda West uh, kindergarten's got an issue as well. So <clears throat> I suppose just want to preface my question with it's disappointing freedom of information request to that report that you based your whole whole wanting to sell on. So to that, I say, um, it, while it's been a temporary rental facility and could and could cost effectively being re reinstated as one, um, what I'm requesting is that if you are going to go through with the sale process, that some or all of the funds be hypothecated for capital work improvements and the rental of premises for the use by Middle Park Kindergarten and other local kindergartens in St Kilda West and Middle Park. So this there needs to be a fair and equitable distribution back to three year olds um, in the area, and this moment needs to include a little percentage of the proceeds of this that would satisfy this community need. So that's my, uh, I suppose, you know, statement and preface. I'm hoping that uh, you can consider the perspective of, of the local ratepayers. This property was was for in the past, and and the requirements that we have going into the future. Thank you, Mr. Gasky. Now, I was um, remiss in asking you for just to um, say your name and your suburb, please, just for the record. Uh, yeah. Sorry, where are you from? Uh, Middle Park. Middle Park, thank you. The actual, this line is actually not very good. I'm only getting every sort of fourth word, uh, every, you know, anyway, it's not entirely clear, so I apologise for that. Thank you, Mr. Gasking. I appreciate you. Um, coming to speak to us. Um, this item will be considered at, at 15.1 and the councillor may take up your question and your comments then. So if you've only caught the fourth word, can you just for the minutes and for the record come back to me with what you have caught and what you haven't, or at least I can clarify what you've caught because it's quite important. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, we, did, we have got your um, submission and we have all read that. Thank you. Okay, but I completed it with a number of other things. Yes, I heard the beginning part of it. Thank you. Okay. Now we have received a further five submissions um, and they'll be read out on behalf of the members of the public. I'll call on the name of each member of the public and refer to the coordinator of governance to read a summary of their submissions and a copy of all statements will be published on in full on council's website tomorrow. So first up is uh, Adrian Jackson. Through you, Madam Mayor, Adrian Jackson submits a public question that states, why is a further $180,000 being loaned or given to the Port Phillip Art community when Council already offers generous arts grants annually and has pork barrelled some local arts institutions for decades? Why is this grant including art acquisitions when the Council has too much art in storage? Is some of this art items no one else wants? Is Council aware that artists can apply for Commonwealth Government financial assistance if out of work? Thank you. Now, um, Mr Keenan, are you able to respond to that uh, question from Mr Jackson? Yes, through you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> uh, the grants this year in the Arts Rescue Package are being given instead of our other arts grants this year, not in addition to, and they were funded from savings we took this year. And there were more savings made to that program than the cost of the grants. Uh, we are aware that additional grant programs are available for artists, but none that specifically support those within our own community. And one of the criteria is that people can't be seeking, uh, can't be double dipping per se, that they can't be applying for one grant with government and then this grant. The Arts Rescue Package, including the acquisition budget, is intended to support those artists and cultural practitioners within the city of Port Phillip who've struggled greatly to stay afloat in this pandemic and whose creative output greatly enhances our city. We're looking forward to sharing more of our art collection with the community over the next year as we do work to better um, make the collection available to the public and, we'll cho and we choose works based on their merit and relevance to the City of Port Phillip. Just to clarify, Mr Keenan, is any of this art no one, no one wants? That's one of Mr um, Jackson's questions. Uh, through you, man. Uh, no, I don't think that's an accurate um, characterisation. Uh, the art collection is worth many millions of dollars, so 
on the basis of its market value, one would have to say that it is art that people want. Thank you, Mr Keenan. Uh, the next uh, public question of submitter is John Webster. Through you, Madam Mayor, John Webster submits the following public question. Council is under financial stress with the current climate. Will Council institute a wage freeze for two or three years? Mr Carroll, are you able to address that question? Through you, Mayor. Um, I believe the CEO responded to a similar question in the last meeting, but I'll um, outline at the moment that the, the executive team the organisation takes very seriously um, the economic impacts of COVID-19 and have been going through the budgets line by line um, to find savings um, to help balance the budget, but also making sure that we've got some um, support available for those who need it the most. Having said that, in relation to this, the executive team has made a decision that um, Wages will be freezed for managers and senior officers and senior executive officers for the next financial year. Uh, we do intend, though, to honour the legal contractual requirement under our enterprise agreement um, wage indexation requirements. Thank you very much, Mr Carroll. Now, our next submitter is Jenny Roper. Um, I'm just to note that I'm Pretty sure this is in relation to 14.3, which is the status of council decisions and questions taken on notice. So, but um, if we could hear her submission, please. Through you, Madam Mayor, two public questions have been submitted that both relate to both public question and item 14.3. The question submitted by Jenny Roper reads, with regards to the petition, a social amenity crisis in St Kilda, which was received by Council on 18 November 2019 and presented to Council on 4 December 2019 with over 900 signatures. I am inquiring in relation to recommendations C and D of the petition as to whether the CEO has written to Minister Lisa Neville, Outreach Services and the Alfred Hospital as yet now speaking as a victim from an incident in Fitzroy Street, St Kilda. I am advocating for the letters to be sent without delay or debate if this request has not already been actioned. The current decline in Fitzroy, Ackland and surrounding streets is now out of control. As a local community in Port Phillip, including Council, Victoria Police and Services, we all need to work together to secure a better outcome so no more people can get hurt. Thank you, um, and I'm sure a council will take up that question at item 14.3. Now, I'd like to call on Jason Rowder, please. The question submitted by Jason Rowder is on the same item um, and relates to both public question time and item 14.3, and it states, I write to Council in regards to the petition, a social amenity crisis in St Kilda, which was received by Council on 18 November and presented to Council on 4 December 2019 with over 920 signatures. As a lead petitioner, due to an administrative error, we have not received a formal response from Council yet. I wish to inquire in relation to the recommendations. A, does Council intend to declare a social amenity crisis? Yes, no noting that the amenity situation has worsened during COVID-19. B, is considering increasing resources in relation to social amenity bylaws offices in the Fitzroy Street, Ackland Street and Carlisle Street precinct, noting that PSOs have been deployed to these precincts during COVID-19? Yes, no. C, I request the CEO write to the Honourable Lisa Neville, Minister for Police and Emergency Services, requesting extra resources. D, I request the CEO to contact Alfred Health and Outreach Services, including Launch Housing, noting that Launch Housing has recently located homeless from St Kilda into the St Kilda Hostel, which is currently a crime hotspot and Ridges Hotel on Fitzroy Street, which is also a precinct frequented by local drug dealers and a crime hotspot. E, I request social and community housing associations, namely Housing First and Paran Housing, 
that are completely ignoring problem tenants be held accountable. If this is a state issue and cannot be controlled by council, then funding from council must cease. Okay, thank you uh, for that, uh, Mr. Rowder. Those questions will also be taken up at item 14.3. Um, unless the council wants to take any questions up in count the question from councillor in qu councillor question time. Um, now we'll go to the next item, uh, 15.1, which is notice of motion sale of eight York Streets in Kilda. I think we have David Keane. Through you, Madam Mayor. David Keane has submitted a statement which I read in summary. It is alarming to note that at its meeting on 20 May 2020, Council voted not to proceed with the sale of one of its long-term unused property assets, 8 York Street, St Kilda West, against the recommendation of Council officers. The sale of this asset, estimated to yield in the range of 3.5 to 3.8 million, will reduce the revenue shortfall by over 10% could be achieved within a matter of weeks at practically no cost and would yield immediate and ongoing savings in holding costs. Defeat of the motion to sell was largely based on the assertion that real estate values have fallen and that a significantly better return could be achieved when the market recovers. This assertion was made without any supporting empirical evidence and is readily refuted by reference to historical data over at least the past 20 years. It appears to have been based on some media reports making generalisations about the property market as a whole. Anyone who has brought property in Port Phillip and in Lake Ward in particular will attest to the area's extraordinary resistance to general trends. It also ignores the fact that there is substantially less stock available at this time. In short, the assertion was just plain wrong. I am aware of at least two potential buyers who are keenly interested in at the estimated sale price. The property can be sold now at or above fair market value, which is unaffected by COVID or any other influence. Thank you very much and uh, thank you um, to that submitter. Again, um, we'll take that up that question uh, when we get to that item of 15.1. Thank you very much. Now, councillors, uh, that was public question time and submitters submissions. I will go to item five, which is councillor question time. Councillors, are there any questions? I'll just kick off. I have a couple that I'd like to ask um, the officers. Um, so there's been uh, a few people that have um, are been are quite keen on wanting to set up drive-in music gigs, that sort of things, events um, that do potentially um, uh, physically distance from other other people. I'm just wondering, do we have a process for uh, application for these uh, communities wanting to do that at the moment? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I can answer that question. Uh, yes, we do. Um, we have a, a process that's outlined on Council's website for people wanting to run events. Um, we can make the link to that available in the minutes of the meeting. Thank you very much. I have another question around uh, the process to advertise as per the Local Government Act uh, for, you know, uh, planning or all sorts of things that we need to do, planning scheme amendments. Now that there's no uh, local newspaper in which ads can be printed, I'm just wondering how do we uh, uh, comply with our legal requirements under the Act? Through um, you, Madam Mayor, um, where officers are of the view that the Age or the Herald Sun will satisfy uh, those statutory requirements. Uh, I understand the statutory requirements are that uh, it needs to be advertised in a newspaper generally circulating in the municipal district of the council uh, and officers of, are of the view that uh, the two publications I mentioned uh, previously would satisfy that requirement. Uh, officers um, also um, ensure that important notices are advertised through a, a range of other um, mechanisms as well. Thank you very much, Ms. Bennett. And if I could, 
add to that, Madam Mayor, Is we also different? notify all the um, adjacent property owners um, where a planning application has been submitted. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Um, and my final question has been um, requested from a number of people um, in the community and it's around our depot and dropping um, items off at the depot. And one example on Monday morning uh, was uh, somebody seventh in line in a car had to wait 47 minutes to drop off some green waste. Um, I'm wondering if we have, um, we'll be looking at our processes in order to p potentially triage um, green waste, e-waste and, and other rubbish um, to sort of speed up uh, people being able to dump rubbish since they're in the car and they don't need to effectively uh, physically isolate. So, Mr Johnson? Uh, yes, through you, Mayor. Um, so over uh, at Council's um, Resource and Recovery Centre in South Melbourne, as you spoke about, there has been some restrictions in place to encourage social distancing with the relaxing of the uh, state government uh, restrictions. Uh, there are some changes that are being made this week uh, at the transfer station. So now six cars will be able to enter the site at any one time. Uh, we are still maintaining um, some control over uh, who can and uh, can, how many cars we can have access into the site at one time to ensure that uh, social distancing is in place for people utilising the facility and also for the staff that work there. Uh, the site is also used by some of Council's other amenity services, so there can be quite a few staff on site at one time. Um, there's uh, visitation is still more than double um, the pre-COVID-19 uh, pandemic levels. So there is going to remain some queuing uh, on, at uh, the site, particularly at busy times such as on weekends. There is a traffic management plan in place that provides some queuing space for people waiting to enter the site. Uh, we do hope though that with um, uh, the six car limit being now imposed that uh, we should be able to have people avoiding to wait that period of time anymore. Thank you, Mr Johnson. Councillor Crawford, do you have a question? Uh, I wanted to uh, ask a question. Obviously, in this time of COVID and obviously with big budget restrictions and many more people at home, working from home and in our community, how has our recycling been going and the contamination rates? Uh, I'd be interested to know, have we been doing the right thing as a community, please? Mr. Johnson. Uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, unfortunately, um, as a proportion of the total material in Council's residential recycling stream, the contamination rate has increased significantly since the pandemic has begun. The contamination rate usually hovers around 10%. That has increased to between 25 and 30%. That was based on an audit that was undertaken in April. Um, unfortunately, last week, another a smaller audit was done looking at recycling from St Kilda uh, and that had contamination rates of over 40%. Um, contamination is a really difficult issue to manage uh, in our curbside recycling stream. Um, when curbside recycling is heavily contaminated, it's extremely expensive to separate the contamination from the materials that can be recovered. And in many cases, contamination results in the entire contents of the bin uh, being diverted to landfill, which is obviously not an outcome uh, uh, that, is, um, that we want. Um, the mayor has recently written to all residents and all properties in the municipality, um, encouraging residents to be mindful about what they place in their recycling bins. Uh, and also provided some advice on some similar, uh, some, some usual suspects that are, are causes of contamination. Some of those things include plastic bags going into recycling bins. Um, over the coming weeks, officers are developing up a proposal that will be brought back to council uh, that's going to look about uh, look at a few options for further decreasing uh, that contamination rate. The last thing I would say is that. Um, uh, this is an issue across metropolitan Melbourne. There are higher contamination rates um, uh, that many councils are experiencing. Um, it's a challenge for all um, and it does give us um, 
pause to actually think about what we're putting in our recycle bins. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's really disappointing news, but um, good to see that you're doing some things about it. Any further questions, councillors? If not, we will go to item six, which is a sealing schedule, and there are no documents requiring sealing tonight. Seven petitions and joint letters, and there are no uh, documents there either. So now we'll go to the substantive portion of, the, of tonight's meeting, which is the presentation of reports. So the first one up is the CEO report, um, issue 66, um, report 8.1. Councillors, do you have any questions of the officers on this report? I'll kick off, I have a couple. Um, I noticed in the act and adapt section, um, it was very interesting to see the thermal imaging of South Melbourne. I'm wondering if more information can be obtained by the community on what's occurring in South Melbourne and what they can do with this sort of information. Might be Miss Rosick. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, sorry about that. Um, in short, um, more information about this project will be available on our website when the data is complete. Um, and the community can also access previous less detailed vegetation and thermal imagery completed earlier uh, in 2018 on Victorian government websites, which we'll also provide on our website. And just to let you know that um, this work is um, being undertaken with, uh, with the university to complete detailed thermal mapping and modelling of South Melbourne and the area was previously chose, chosen um, because it's known as a hotspot. South Melbourne is known as a hotspot in the city and it's also an area where we, um, we know there'll be a lot of development and this data, the thermal mapping data, will be used to test what, what can be done to reduce heat and it'll also assist us in the development of the South Melbourne Structure Plan which we're proposing to develop next financial year. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Crawford, did you have a question? No. Um, no, sorry, Mayor. I'm fine. Thank you. I wanted to ask about gas works as well. So um, it's itemised that there are some scheduled delays and more information will be known about the timeline in May 2020, which we've just passed. I'm just wondering if we could have some advice um, on what the current timetable is there for decontamination and rectification. Uh, through you, Mayor, uh, I can provide some answers. Um, so in May, it was determined that further testing to understand the groundwater contamination on site is required. Uh, this additional work is unlikely to be completed this calendar year uh, and currently officers are expecting this will be completed in mid-2021. Um, Council had previously uh, announced the surface of gas works can be maintained under the development of the CMAP or the Contamination Management Action Plan, uh, which is still intended to be published later this year. Uh, Council is developing a site plan that will demonstrate to the EPA auditor compliance to the CMAP. Uh, community engagement uh, on this uh, will commence later this year. Thank you, Mr Johnson. Councillor Simic, you have a question? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm just looking at um, the CEO's report and where it talks in particular about uh, Council having received approval for 122,400 of Victorian government funding for an intermetro partnership project that will inform the delivery of the common ground housing on sites identified by government or other parties. I'm just wondering if officers can elaborate on this funding a little bit more, uh, how it will be implemented and what sort of timeline we're looking at. Um, through you, Mayor. Yes, the okay. Intermetro Park. Yeah, uh, the common ground has been a priority for the Intermetro Partnership, um, with an aim to the partnership has been recommending for at least one common ground to be developed in each of the three inner city um, LGAs. Uh, this funding will um, do. A, it will fund the 
learnings of a pilot project uh, uh, in the city of Port Phillip with a view to informing how further common grounds could be rolled out when and if funding becomes available. So uh, the aim is that we will be establishing a common ground pilot project in the city uh, and this will be funding to help document the outcomes, document the practice model uh, to inform future um, common ground projects across the three inner city local government areas. Thank you, Mr Keenan. Another question from me. Um, on, in the report, um, there's an item that's off track um, around hostile vehicle mitigation, uh, foreshore security gate cameras, it's titled. And it details there that um, council plans to install fixed cameras uh, to monitor gates and access paths as additional security measures um, to reduce the risk of incidents to council assets. I'm wondering where are the security gate cameras going to be? Uh, through you, Mayor, I can provide an answer to that. Uh, so along Council's foreshore, there are many access gates that provide access for maintenance, for people who are running events, uh, for emergency services to access both the foreshore area, but also access uh, the, the beach. Um, those gates are um, uh, pretty much along the entire length of the foreshore. We have some of those that are heavily used by um, uh, lots of other organisations beyond council. So it is proposed that cameras be installed on a number of those gates. Uh, I don't have the exact detail on how many, um, they, the exact locations of where they'll be installed, but there are multiple uh, multiple sites along the foreshore uh, where those gates are most heavily used by other organisations in addition to council. Okay, thank you, Mr. Johnson. And just one last um, comment, really. Um, just the council attendance at the council meetings. I just note that there was there is a duplicated item there. Um, just wondering which um, is it a hundred percent attendance or was it the other one um, with less attendance? I wasn't quite sure. I think it might be a carryover from another report. On through you, Madam Mayor, apologies to councillors and readers of the um, CEO report for any confusion that was caused. Uh, just to clarify, 92% is the cumulative result for councillor attendance in uh, for the financial year of 2019-20 and 100% reflects the monthly attendance uh, for the month of April 2020. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Any further questions, Councillor Pearl? Thanks, Mayor Boss. Um, my question is in relation to Jail Murphy Reserve Pavilion. Just, I've been waiting for this one to drop off because obviously the project's completed, but I was interested to read that it says the financial component is at risk because we're still waiting for invoices to come in. So I just wanted to ask uh, why that's the case and whether or not that it's, a, it's a material risk. And the second, perhaps I'll ask that and I'll ask the second question next. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, so, as uh, Councillor Pearl uh, just stated, the vast majority of the JL Murphy Pavilion upgrade project has been completed. There was one element uh, of the project that has not yet been completed, which was to have a uh, an opening event. It was unfortunately waylaid um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, that is the final step that's required um, to uh, satisfy the conditions of the grant that was provided to Council for funding. Um, that's holding up the finalisation uh, of the finances for the project. Um, in addition, it's not unusual for projects like this to have um, a bit of a long tail to actually finalise some of the finances before the project can be fully closed off. So we can't, sorry, just to follow up before I ask the next question, but so we can't get the money from the state government until we have an opening ceremony? I think, uh, sorry, through you, Mayor. So the entire project needs to be uh, capitalised. So all the finances are quitted. Uh, I believe that the uh, final step in that process is to have the plaque on the building and uh, have the opening. 
Right. And there's no question the plaque was on the building, but we ripped it off. So now I know why the plaque has been ripped off. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's amusing. Po yeah. Politicians love cutting ribbons, don't they? Um, the, the, part of, the next part was the loan to the club. Now, it's been obviously disappointing that only five months into the loan that the club is now un unable to pay because their revenue has been decimated. So what support is um, council providing the clubs given they no, can no longer pay this this loan that we've lent to them? Uh, three year, Mayor. I'll have to take that question on notice, but I can provide an answer in the minutes on what support is being provided. Thanks very much. That's it from me. Thank you very much. I don't think it's actually been handed over yet officially either, but um, it's be good to understand that, Mr Johnson. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. So no other questions. Councillors, we have an officer's recommendation to accept the CEO report. Do I have a mover for that or something different? Please pop in the chat. Councillors, Um, so we've got a Councillor Simic to move and Councillor Pearl to second. Councillor Simic, would you like to speak to the report? Uh, thank you, Mayor. As always, uh, a huge amount of work um, happening at uh, Council uh, under incredibly difficult circumstances and the pandemic we face uh, as, as a community. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic to see that Council is still uh, drawing on so many achievements, particularly um, pleased to read uh, about the common uh, ground uh, funding and look forward to the next steps around that. Um, as a council, uh, we've been continuously committed to supporting people who are uh, doing it tough. Uh, and we know through all the evidence uh, available that providing housing for people uh, is such an important step in, in improving their lives. Um, and I'm really proud of council's uh, participation in that. Um, so really like to thank the officers in, in, in driving that work through the Inner Metro Partnership um, also, uh, congratulations on uh, all of the other achievements. Um, there are some, um, well, there's obviously areas for improvement and there are some projects which are currently off track, um, but I know that we're working very hard as a council uh, to realise the council plan as best as possible uh, in light of the uh, incredible external circumstances that we face. Um, I, I'll leave it there um, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Simic. Councillor Pearl? Thanks very much. The, the important part of this report is, is towards the back, which talks about the, um, the comprehensive income statement. So we're starting to see the effects of what the country and our municipality and families in our municipality are starting to go through. Um, to note, you know, income has been substantially affected already as the results start to come through with fees and fines down 24%, um, capital grants down, some areas up, but fairly marginally, and expenses also uh, moving around. Bad and doubtful debts up 1.1 million above forecast, 30% higher. Um, there's, a, there's a lot going on in our balance sheet and our profit and loss statement in particular at the moment that we need to start uh, keeping a, a very close eye on and making sure that we're um, make, you know, making every dollar count that's in our budget, and making sure that our rate pays money goes to the right place, the most cost effective um, place, but we'll start to see as May and June starts to come in. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, with our comprehensive income statement. Happy to support the report. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. Would anyone else like to speak? If not, I will put that motion. And by division, uh, Councillor Pearl. In favour. Councillor Simic. Four. Councillor Voss, four. Councillor Baxter, four. Councillor Bond, four. Councillor Brand, four. Councillor Copsey, four. Councillor Crawford, four. Councillor Gross, four. That motion is unanimously carried. Thank you. The next item on the report on the of the agenda is ten point one, which is Fisherman's Bend parking controls findings. Councillors, do you have any questions of the officers? I have one question, um, Ms. Rosick. Uh, there was the opportunity for the community to uh, state their 
issues and concerns through to the website. I'm just wondering how many uh, people uh, contributed to that uh, option. Through you, Madam Mayor, I'll invite um, Ms Becker to answer that question. Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor, um, I will actually just uh, pass that over to um, Stefan Metric to answer that. Sorry. Through you, Madam Mayor. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Madam Mayor. Altogether, 89 people were advised that, uh, well, initially 89 people participated in the consultation and back in uh, February 2020, we went to those people and advising them to continue in participating in the consultation and we only received three responses back. Wow, that's not very many at all. Okay, and we're pretty certain about those numbers. I did have quite a number in Area 3 contact me and I pushed them back through that process. So we're, we're, you're certain that there was no others, only three? Through you, Madam Mayor, we checked all CRM records and other records and 80, 89 people uh, took part in our consultation, but somehow throughout the year, it wiggled down to just three. Okay, thank you, and, Mr. Mitchell. And if I could add through you, Madam Mayor, just to let you know, uh, to reassure councillors, that we did contact all stakeholders in February about this report um, who had expressed interest, and uh, including the Fishermen's Bend Business Association. So we did endeavour to engage as many people as possible in the community in this process. So just to clarify, when you say stakeholders, that would have been the 89 people that originally communicated with and yes. some of the business and some of the, yeah. Okay. That is correct, Madam Mayor. Okay, but not generally a big mail out. Okay. Through Please. you, Madam Mayor, that is correct. We did not do any more mail outs. We just managed to continue contacting people that expressed interest in the topic. And also on Friday, 29 of May, just before this council meeting, we again contacted all those 89 people, including uh, Fisherman's Band Business Forum, and advised them of, of this coming meeting and the presentation of the report. Thank you, Mr. Metric. Any further questions, councillors? So just to clarify, Ms. Rosick, uh, what we're doing is um, continuing um, to consult with residents around the changing of the parking to a two hour paid parking restriction and allowing them to park all day there from a rate of one, and in some areas, $1 per hour. Is that summary? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, just to clarify, so we observe that the utilisation rate of um, the two hour parking in area one um, was low and um, we uh, that that the fee and through the feedback that we could optimize that parking availability more in area one by by changing the two hour parking to all day parking so what we're proposing and our recommendation to council is that we consult with business owners in area one and residents and adjacent streets um, to um, ascertain uh, if they do support changing the two hour paid parking restrictions in area one to all day, the parking rate would, would remain at the reduced rate of $1 an hour and, if count, and then for council to endorse and uh, provide um, delegate authority, I should say, to the CEO to adjust the paid parking rates and parking controls in area one based on this feedback and to achieve uh, parking utilisation of 75 to 85% to facilitate achieving that. 
So Thank we'll you, provide Susan. more opportunities for flexible car parking in that area. Great. Okay, councillors, we have an officer's recommendation. Uh, do I have a mover for that or something different? I'm happy to move. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Copsey, we have a seconder. Um, I, I don't need to speak to that report. Does anyone else want to speak to the report? Then if not, I'll put that motion under division once again. Councillor Simic. Abstain. Councillor Voss, four. Councillor Baxter. Four. Councillor Bond. Four. Councillor Brand. Four. Councillor Copsey. Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Councillor Gross. Four. Councillor Pearl. In favour. In favour. That motion is carried. Thank you. Our next item is 11.1, .1, which is the contract for Middle Park Beach Nourishment Works. Any questions of the officers, councillors? Councillor Pearl? A couple if I could. So um, three or four years ago, maybe, I don't know exactly when, but on my morning walk for many weeks, I was noticing it happened that the, the South Melbourne Beach was being re-nourished. So do we do this in... Do we do this in chunks along the coastline? How does the program of works um, along the coastline for this, this sort of activity work? Mr Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you, uh, Councillor Pearl, your recollection is correct. Uh, about four years ago, we uh, did reconstruct the South Melbourne beach. Um, the way that this works, as the report spells out, Council doesn't own this land, it's owned by the State, Council's Committee of Management for it uh, um, through an arrangement with uh, DELP. Uh, the agreement spells out that Council has to re-nourish the beach to maintain it at a certain width. Uh, and so some areas of the beach, some beaches along our foreshore uh, degrade quicker than others, erode quicker than others, and others um, uh, uh, retain their width for longer periods of time. So the reason why the Middle Park Beach is up for re-nourishment now is that it has started to drop below that minimum width and we need to re-nourish it to get it back to that width. Um, the South Melbourne Beach um, hopefully will uh, will hold up for a few years longer before we have to do the same works there. Thank you, Mr Johnson. Any further questions? Then One more if I could. I'm sorry, who's that? Yeah, it's Marcus. I just put a oh. Q in there, but I think you might have confused it with my other Q. Apologies, Marcus. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, ne next question was the last time they did it, from what Councillor Bond says also is the storm damage in 2016, there were very large diesel gen sets placed along the, the foreshore. Um, and I think there, there was some noise protection that was put in place after a while, but is that, because these de gen sets were running quite early in the morning, so will it be the same sort of situation where we have diesel gen sets pump, uh, fueling the pumps to um, complete the, the dredging or re-nourish what works? And will they be sound protected from the residents along the foreshore? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. I might defer to Council's Senior Project Manager, Ms. San Roman, to actually provide some detail on how we're proposing to mitigate the acoustic impacts on nearby residents. Through you, my mayor. Um, uh, the, I mean, we're going to use pretty much the same uh, type of uh, noise barriers that were used last time. So the idea is that these are going to be installed, uh, you know, to protect the booster pump where all the, you know, because I think a lot of the noise is going to be offshore where the dredge is going to be located, but then the booster pump that is going to be on the beach, that is the one that creates um, noise that could disturb the residents. So we're going to install those noise barriers and then when working at night, we're not going to allow any many mechanical spraying of the sand. So it's going to be just the pumping, which we think it, the noise levels were quite acceptable last time around once the noise barriers were installed. Thank you. And Councillor Pearl, another question? 
Thanks very much. And under section eight, there's only you know twelve or so words there about the environmental impact. I'm just wondering what the ecological impact of this dredging works uh, is on the, the the local environment. Uh, through you, uh, through you, Mayor, um, I will uh, defer to um, Council's um, project manager, Ms. San Roman, again, but just to add um, in advance of what she's going to say, um, uh, the beaches along the entire foreshore are all man made. Uh, so the construction of those beaches, the regular construction of those beaches, um, is required to be undertaken in this way. There are designated um, sand burrows that we can use offshore that uh, are earmarked for us to be able to borrow the sand from there and use it to construct the beach. Um, I will defer to Ms. San Roman to add anything else regarding the ecological impact of the works. Okay, so uh, in terms of the borough area, we have done, uh, sorry, through through you, Madam Mayor. So we've done uh, extensive uh, sampling just to um, study the biodiversity of the you know ecosystem in the sand so we think we have uh, all the information required in terms of you know the i guess the, the 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 like the value of the biodiversity is not considered to be uh you know important uh so i guess that in terms of the uh, the, the project itself we're going to have an environmental management plan we're complying with all the epa requirements and i guess that these type of works as uh, uh miss johnson has mentioned uh they can't be done in a different way because all these beaches are artificially made so i don't know if hope you hopefully that answers your question thank you thanks very much Thank you. Any further questions, councillors? If not, we have an officer's recommendation. Do I have a move of that or something different? Okay, um, Councillor Copsey to move and Councillor Gross to second. Councillor Copsey, would you like to speak to the motion? No, Councillor Gross, would you like to speak? Look, I, I, I will speak. Um, I get incredibly excited by beach renourishment works. They are a huge contribution to the community, both socially, because they provide, you know, an expansion of the most desirable recreational area um, that can be found in any city, the beach. And secondly, and increasingly importantly, they are a soft barrier uh, in the event of sea level rise. So you can have soft barriers like um, plants and uh, sand, or you can have hard barriers like uh, sea walls. I know which I would prefer. So this is incredibly important for the whole city, uh, very important for Middle Park, and it arises because sand is, is mobile. Sand and sediments move particularly with the prevailing winds. So we have um, prevailing winds from the southwest in summer and from the north in winter. And so that moves the sand and sediments around and that movement is interrupted because we put in things like piers and we put in things like um, the St Kilda uh, Harbour with its uh, protection for the ships and the boats in there, but that does interrupt the sand flow so that it builds up in St Kilda, West St Kilda Beach and it um, abates elsewhere along that stretch. So the beach is just so important to us for many reasons. And the only other thing, if anyone from the community is listening, I'd say two things. First of all, before any beach renourishment can take place, the renourishing sand is tested to make sure it's not contaminated. So um, that's an important aspect of beach renourishment. And um, uh, I, the other thing I'd say is that when the um, renourishing sand is piped onto the beach, it is often black. That is not tar sediments or any pollution. That is a dark microbe. And these microbes, it's, 
like mass murder of microbes, they die in the sun. And that's when the, um, the sand goes from uh, black, gray, through down to the sand color that we know. So every time there's a beach renourishment exercise, I get lots of phone calls saying, you know, you're pumping tar onto the beach. That's not the case. It's just a little microbe that lives and then dies in the sun. So um, it's fantastic for everyone except for that microbe, and I really look forward to it. Thank you, Councillor Gross. Uh, would anyone else like to speak to this report? Councillor Pearl. Thanks very much. So the, most of the city of Port Phillip past St Kilda West is, is really man-made, particularly Fisherman's Bend, Port Melbourne, large chunks of South Melbourne and most of Albert Park. Um, it's, it's a man-made environment and this beach is part of that. So it's also a part of the municipality that gets a, a, a lot of weather. Um, and twice in the past three years I've seen surfers on Middle Park Beach, not, not, not in six foot waves, but able to stand up on a surfboard given the amount of weather it actually gets down there. So it, it, it does weather, and as Councillor Gross says, it moves um, quite a lot. Um, this is good value for ratepayers in that we're not paying for it. So it, it's uh, state government money, and they dictate that this is a good value and good investment, and it creates more public open space for our local community. So for the eight-week period in which this takes place, uh, a lot of diesel fuel gets burnt um, on the foreshore there, which creates some public disturbance. But come spring, come summer, um, the community should be able to rejoice and enjoy this increased public open space, which even on my measure, based on what we pay for public open space in other areas, is, is pretty good value. So um, I hope we can put up with the noise and put up with the smell um, as these works take place, but very happy to support the motion. Thanks very much. Thanks, Councillor Pearl. Would anyone else like to speak? If not, I'll just quickly say a couple of things as well. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank the officers. Um, on successfully getting a reduced price through our best and final offer process. Uh, this has been uh, quite well uh, done and congratulations on that. I also think the 24-7 opportunity, while it may um, be slightly more noise and I hope we can mitigate that, there will be less time before we get back our, a nice lovely beach. So thanks very much for the officers for going through that process and getting such a good deal. Uh, Councillor Copsey, would you like to close? No? Then I'll put that motion under division again, councillors. First up, we've got Councillor Baxter. Four. Councillor... Oh, sorry. Um, Councillor Bond. Four. Councillor Brand. Four. Councillor Copsey. Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Councillor Gross. Enthusiastically, four. <laughs> Councillor Pearl. In favour. Councillor Simic? Ecstatically four. Oh dear, okay. Uh -huh. And Councillor Voss, four. Thank you. That motion is unanimously carried. Item 14.1, which is a notice to in, of intention to lease, commence, think OTS, the, a resolution independent propriety limited. Um, so, councillors, do you have any questions of the officers on this particular item? Um, Councillor Perrell, is that a question? Was that from before? Uh, no, that was from the previous item. Okay. Um, so just to confirm, I, I've got one question. This is the second floor above the our community chest uh, op shop. Is that correct, uh, Ms McNeil? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Any further questions, councillors? If not, we have an officer's recommendation. Do I have a mover for that or something different? Councillor Copsey to move. And Councillor Crawford to second. Councillor Copsey, would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor Crawford? Would anyone else like to speak? Then I'll put that motion under division once again. Um, Councillor Voss, four. Councillor Baxter? Four. Councillor Bond? Four. 
Councillor Brand? For. Councillor Copsey? For. Councillor Crawford? For. Councillor Gross? For. Councillor Pearl? In favour. Councillor Simic? For. That motion is unanimously carried. Thank you. 14.2 is assemblies of council. Of council. Any questions of the officers, councillors? If not, we have an officer's recommendation. Councillor Pearl to move. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Simic to second. Councillor Pearl, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you. Councillor Simic? Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Then I'll put that motion again under division. Councillor Bond? Four. Councillor Brand? Four. Councillor Copsey? Four. Councillor Crawford? Four. Councillor Gross? Four. Councillor Pearl? In favour. Councillor Simic? Four. Councillor Voss? Four. Councillor Baxter? Four. That motion is unanimously carried. Item 14.3. Uh, is the status of council decisions and questions taken on notice recorded by council from the 1st of January to the 31st of March 2020. Councillors, uh, do you have any questions of the officers? We'll remind you that there was a couple earlier on uh, of the submissions, if anyone wants to take up any of those. Councillor Crawford, a question. I guess I just wanted to clarify, have we sent letters to uh, Minister Neville and, and the Alfred and all of that? I, so I, I guess I would like to know, um, as a result of that motion, did we send those letters? Um, Senates? Oh, Mr Keenan. Sorry, uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, the resolution that uh, councillors endorsed was that um, those letters would be sent at the request of council. Council hasn't made that request. Um, the officer's recommendation that should council decide uh, that they would like the CEO or would, would request the CEO to write to Minister Neville or the Alfred, uh, that we'd re recommend that that be done in partnership with Inspector Maguire White of St Kilda Police to ensure this process uh, builds on the value of policing and service provision in the area. Thank you, Councillor Crawford. Was there any other, were there any other questions? Mr Keenan, just to clarify, all the other items in that um, uh, motion um, have been completed apart from that, that one particular one. Is that correct? Uh, all of the ones that officers were asked, that, that the council resolution required us to do or asked us to do, there was a delay in uh, responding to the main petitioner, but that's been rectified. Thank you. Councillor Pearl. Thanks very much. I've just lost my page number, so I can give you the exact page. Just wondering in relation to uh, my notice of motion in February relating to parking in Port Melbourne. I have got the officer's response in front of me, I'll just get it now, but it said there was a briefing that was coming to Council on the 13th of May, which wasn't on the briefing schedule and that's coming to a Council meeting. So just wondering if, I, if I've missed the briefing uh, for that matter and when it's coming to a Council meeting, please. Ms Rosick? Sorry, um, Mr. Page Palmer. 11 of the report, okay. pardon me, Ms Rosick. It Page has 11. been at a briefing already. Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Yes. And when's it coming to a council meeting? Oh. Um. oh. Um. Through you, Madam Mayor, my understanding is it's next week. Um. Or oh. I'll just check that. Won't be. It's coming in the next, um, either the next meeting or the subsequent meeting. So the report is in draft at the moment. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions on this report? Um, okay, so if 
Um, I'm happy to put that motion uh, or something different. Do I have a mover? Councillor Copsey to move. Councillor Gross to sec. Uh, sorry, Councillor Baxter to second. Councillor Copsey, would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor Baxter, would you like to speak? Uh, yeah, only to say that it, um, I continue to uh, think that uh, coming back to this report uh, is a really good and transparent way of uh, making sure that people are across our decision making and uh, and where we're at. Uh, to things, so it's good. Thank you, Councillor Baxter. Would anyone else like to speak? Councillor Gross, are you wanting to speak or are you just? I'm just getting ready to go for. <laughs> okay then. All right, then we'll put that motion again under division. Uh, first up, we've got Councillor Brand. Four. Councillor Copsey. Four. Councillor Crawford? Four. Councillor Gross? Sort of giving away, game away, but four. <laughs> Councillor Pearl? In favour. Councillor Simic? Four. Councillor Voss? Four. Councillor Baxter? Four. Councillor Bond? Four. That motion is unanimously carried. Thank you. Now we'll move to item 15, um, which is notices of motion. And councillors, we have one notice of motion tonight, um, item 15.1, which is a notice of motion that I've raised um, in relation to the sale of 8 York Street, St Kilda West. Um, so I will normally would ask people to read the motion, so I'll read the motion. I, Mayor Bernadine Voss, give notice that I intend to move the motion below outlined at the ordinary meeting of Council on the 3rd of June 2020. Um, so, and that is that Council, one, notes that it has received, heard and considered the submissions in response to its notice of intention to sell 8 York Street, St Kilda West. Two, resolves to sell 8 York Street, St Kilda West by public auction. Three, resolves to set the reserve price prior to the auction. Four, authorises relevant officers to execute all the necessary processes required to enable the sale and transfer of land, including negotiating with the highest bidder of the property if, if the property is passed in at auction, affixing the common seal of the Port Phillip City Council to the relevant documents, and if the property remains unsold following the auction, leaving it on the market for private sale at not less than the reserve price for an appropriate or reasonable period of time. Five, notes that the submitter is to be advised of the decision to sell the land and the reasons for the decision. Councillors, do I have a, um, um, a mover? I, th I think I'm moving it. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Crawford, oh, sorry, Councillor Bond to second. Um, so I'll be um, I think most of the arguments were put last uh, two weeks ago around this particular item, but um, I look at the officer's reasoning um, behind why this property should be sold. And it has been unoccupied for many years and it is considered surplus. Uh, and it is a financial burden, um, giving, make, maintaining it and sort of keeping it there it's, is of no benefit to the community at the moment. And I think we need to do, convert it um, so that we can use that financial, um, the money from the sale um, to put into something else that is of great need. Selling the property will enable more productive development of the site um, than its current use. It's uh, not within the portfolio strategy and the time for the market is right now. Um, and, um, you know, we could 
mitigate the risk of a declining market if it if this had speed to market right at this very moment. So I believe that this needs to come back to us, which it is today, and that we need to make the decision to, to sell this property at a price that will be set later on, um, closer to the auction. Um, so that's sort of the main difference between two weeks ago and today in that we will have a reserve price to make sure that this property is just not sold for um, a song and it does get the right amount that, that we think this property um, is valued at. So I'll, I will leave it there. Um, Councillor, who was my seconder, sorry. Mm. Councillor Bond, would you like to speak to the motion? And then I did notice that there are some questions. Um, after you, Councillor Bond, I will take some clarifying questions. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think you've outlined the reason for me changing my mind. My fear last time was that this property would be sold below its, um, what I believe to be its value. Um, if we just agreed to put it on the market in challenging times. Um, the difference between this proposal and the previous one is that we get to set a reserve price on that property. And if we're not able to achieve that reserve price, the property doesn't get sold. So uh, this way we are, we are achieving all the, the, the items that the officers wish to achieve by disposing of the property, uh, saving ourselves money, disposing of an asset we don't need, but we're not disposing of it um, at less than fair value, uh, we're going to put a minimum on this and if it doesn't achieve that minimum fair value, it won't get sold. And if it is, does achieve that, well, we deliver uh, best value to ratepayers by selling it at that reserve price, which um, we will put on that property uh, a couple of weeks out from whenever the auction happens to be. So I didn't support this last time because I didn't believe that the proposal before us last time was guaranteed to achieve fair value. Under this situation, we uh, you know, we have a say in the matter and we will ensure that this property does receive fair value um, before we agree to sell. So thank you for bringing this back under these different circumstances. Thank you, Councillor Bond. Now, Councillor Crawford, you heard a question? I wanted to take up some of the question, questions from the public. Um, I, I can't remember the gentleman's name, I apologise. There were just three questions I wanted to clarify. Mr Gasking. Mr Gasking, that's correct, thank you. Um, so he was mentioning that uh, there was no access to the document around why we wouldn't rebuild. So I guess I'm, I'm curious about that, that situation. But um, uh, my understanding was that with the uh, requirements to get funding from the state government, it's not a big enough property with space per child as well. So there are some space restrictions. And the other question I wanted to clarify is I was under the impression that given all the research we've done with children's services, there isn't a great need for uh, childcare or, or kinder places in that Middle Park Alpen Park area that there are enough facilities around that can provide for children. So I guess I would like to clarify that as well, if possible. Let's start with Mr Sevenkov, probably with the first question and then maybe Mr Keenan for the second. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, on the first question about the documentation, we did write to uh, Mr Gasking on the 19th of March advising that uh, the report that he's referring to was prepared for internal purposes, but it did include non-compliance of accessibility items such as accessibility of controls, for instance, the light switches, uh, the height of joinery and bench tops, the disabled toilets, the security gates, circulation space, luminance, contrast and signage. Now, these issues are problematic collectively uh, and because they, they trigger a need, some would trigger a need for a building permit and potentially the requirement for the building to comply with the current building code. And the key point there is that development of the site for any public purpose would require major, re major redevelopment. The second question about uh, demand, uh, sorry, about the space per child. Uh, at the moment, the facility, uh, it's quite con constrained in terms of space uh, for the building and the land. So it's maximum capacity uh, currently is, is only 35 children. On the question of um, uh, demand for that type of service in the area, 
uh, I, re I refer the question to uh, Mr. Tony Keenan, if I may. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, you, Tony. I'm just furiously looking through files, Mayor. Uh, I'll have to take that on notice. Uh, I'm from memory. Uh, Councillor Crawford is correct uh, that there's a low future demand for early childhood services in that part of the city, but I'd just like to confirm that on notice with the modelling that we've done. But uh, I, my memory is that Councillor Crawford is correct, but I'll take it on notice and confirm that. Thank you. Councillor Pearl, you had a question as well. Thanks very much. Got two questions. First one for the officers. Just um, please provide the details of how the reserve price will be set and who will know the reserve price before the auction. Mr. Carroll. Um, <clears throat> through you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> we're still working through the process of how we will set the reserve price with councillors. Um, normally, the reserve price is set through uh, independent um, valuation by a qualified valuer. And, it, and what we will do is still make sure that we get the independent qualified independent valuations from the qualified valuer. Um, to inform decisions by the councillors. Um, we do have a couple of other valuations that we've had recently, so we'll, we'll have around three valuations of recent valuations that the councillors can, can use in their decision making and to also um, gauge how the market's been responding recently. Um, and while it would normally be closely guarded, um, we will have a minimum number of people beyond the councillors who will be aware of the reserve in this current situation. They'll be done in a confidential council meeting prior to the auction um, and it'll only be a minimum number of officers who are directly involved in facilitating the sale. It would be unlikely that even I would normally know the reserve price. Thanks very much. Okay. So, so councillors will know and uh, a minimum number of officers. The second question is you, Mayor. Um, you said just before in your speech, um, quote, the time for the market is right now. Just wondering what evidence you base that on. Um, well, from what the officers said uh, two weeks ago, um, then that this is a market that's still quite buoyant. It's still got some um, sales. There is interest from a number of people um, and we want to take advantage of that. Is that all, Council Pearl? Was there, any, was there anyone else that wants to speak to this item? Council Copsey. Thank you. Um, sorry, <laughs> excuse my cat, who's very keen to participate in proceedings. I just wanted to, I'll be voting against this motion, just wanted to quickly um, speak to my reasons. I appreciate the steps um, that you're putting forward in putting this motion, Mayor Voss, to mitigate against some of the risk. Um, I, I think of, um, I think my main concern comes to whether this it is actually the right time to be disposing of public land at the moment and I, I remain cautious about that. I understand the reasoning put forward by officers um, and I think of examples that I've seen um, also in this municipality where um, other parcels of land that might be that might have been determined to be undevelopable or not fit for the purpose have actually been used um, to great effect by community groups um, and and other organisations. Um, and the one that comes to mind for me is Upton Street um, Crisis Accommodation, uh, which is providing youth crisis, uh, accommodation for youth through periods of crisis um, and in a beautiful garden setting that's therapeutic and is on a parcel of land that would by no means 
be looked at and, and called developable and yet um, we found a way to to get a really great community benefit out of that. So that's really where I'm coming from and I feel it's also notable that the sole submission that we received from the community in response to the advertising of the intention um, was against the disposal of this land. So that's what's informing my reasons tonight. But thank you very much for bringing a motion that I think is designed to mitigate against some of the risks that other councillors were concerned about in relation to price. Thank you, um, Councillor Copsey. Councillor Pearl. Thanks very much. I think this is my fifth by the cherry trying to convince people to vote against this. Um, I'm going to say things I've said before, so apologies for saying the same thing, but let, let me try and put a new angle on this. Um, Low demand for childcare in an area is an interesting thing, but we all know how badly government bureaucrats get demographics right. You only have to go back to the early 1990s and look at school populations, uh, particularly at my end of the municipality, uh, Port Melbourne with, I think, almost less than 100 students at one point, um, now bursting at the steams, et cetera. So let's not put too much focus on, on long-term demographic trends because uh, government, as everybody else is, particularly bad at predicting them. We have a number of properties across our portfolio uh, that would fit this bill even more so. We have um, the former Noshery Cafe, which is still empty. Um, no tenant on the horizon there, from what I understand in terms of the reports I see, but hopefully we'll get one soon. We have the old Brewsters, which is still um, trying to get a tenant in there. Um, we had a bottle shop in Port Melbourne, which really you, you argue is also surplus to council requirements. There's a number of buildings in our portfolio that we don't look at that have less utility than this piece of land here does um, that aren't coming to the market anytime soon. The reason they're not is because we don't have an urgent need for funds and our officers have confirmed this. So back to some of the original uh, comments from the public around it will fill a revenue shortfall, that's not the case. This money isn't going into consolidated revenue, it's going into reserve accounts. And we don't currently have a pressing need uh, which officers have also confirmed, to use those reserve accounts for property purchases. So I still think there's doubts over if this is the best time to sell the property in terms of value. Um, there's no nothing in the officer's report that details uh, evidence-based that at the moment is a good time to sell. I know a number of councillors have been canvassed by real estate agents who say that um, neighbouring properties want to purchase the property. Um, you know, I don't take advice from real estate agents uh, of course, they want commission to sell a property, etc. So I don't think anything's really changed from a market point of view in the last two weeks or so. Strong historical returns would also dictate that this money is better sitting in the property, even with the maintenance costs, even with the opportunity costs that you could, you could raise in rates on this property when you look out 10, 20 years. If the building isn't suitable, perhaps we can change the use of the property for a better community benefit. Let's take stock, have a think about this. Councillor Bond, I hope I can convince you to think about abstaining or voting against this. Not much has really changed in the last two weeks. I also have concerns about councillors setting a reserve price. Um, it, it's, it's unprecedented in some respects. Um, too many people knowing information around a property is not a good thing from a probity point of view, uh, albeit we're bound by confidentiality. It's, it, it, it's strange for councillors to get involved in those sorts of details, which are usually dealt with by officers. So councillors, in the interest of good governance, in the interest of sound financial management, and in the interest of your community, I strongly suggest, with respect, you vote this motion down tonight. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. Councillor Crawford. I will be supporting this motion uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, as was outlined to us that this building uh, has many issues around accessibility and that would, in order to turn it into any other kind of use, it would, up, uh, would require a building permit and probably a complete uh, rebuild of that particular site. So at this point in time, that is uh, with the budget that we have, it is, it is not likely to be turned into anything that we, uh, that we require. Um, also, um, we have note that there is a lot of facilities still around in the near future in, in many parts of our municipality that can provide childcare 
uh, for the future. Um, the big thing that I, that I'm voting for this is if it's sitting there and it's costing us money and, and with the pandemic as it stands, we don't know if we, I mean, the Treasurer said today that we are in a recession uh, and with the current state of things, we could be going into depression. So who knows where land prices may end in the near future. We say 10, 20 years, but I, I think that we should, um, seeing as it's been sitting there unused, costing us money, we should bank what we can before um, there might perhaps be a change in, in land prices um, and use that money um, to upgrade some of the other things that we do have, uh, assets that we do have in, in future times. Uh, so I will be supporting uh, this. I, I think it is is a wise move. Uh, will, you know, the property market, it may change. And, and given that we haven't looked to a depression uh, in a very long time, uh, I think it would be wise to at least test the market now uh, and, and and be smart and if it doesn't sell it doesn't sell it remains in our um in our asset collection thank you councillor crawford councillor brand i'll be speaking uh for the motion um uh, i completely understand the the hesitation that some councillors have in in selling it but i you know when you look at it and apply well you know what seems common sense to me uh, we should be selling it. And I think the idea of having it sitting there, sort of land banking it for years into the future with a building which can't be used, it can't be used as a childcare centre, it can't be used as a house. You could perhaps make it a community vegetable garden, which would make it the most expensive vegetable garden in Melbourne, probably. Um, we might get stuck with that because people might really like it, but it would be an incredibly expensive one to subsidise. Uh, I think you know you can look at the uh, the Kennedy era um, sale of schools, which was incredibly turned out to be incredibly misjudged. They are incredible assets that obviously had potential to be used, and they, it wasn't seen. You can look at Upton Street, which is a which is a really in, really unattractive block of land uh, that had almost no chance of being sold um, for anything purposeful at all. And if we had have sold it, we would have just been throwing away the amazing opportunity that was there to be taken by a creative um, uh, alternative, which is just brilliant, but that is land that was not wanted. This land is absolutely, absolutely prime, prime residential. It's, it's, it's land which is just money to be taken and put to good public use. And I just, uh, I just can't see any reason to hesitate to uh, do that, especially with the protections that we've put around it now are making sure we get a decent price for it. The sooner we do it, the better, I say. Thank you, Councillor Brand. Would anyone else like to speak? And just briefly to close, um, councillors, I think now we are, have a, an op opportunity and we are in a position to sell on our terms. Um, rather than being in a desperate situation where we absolutely need um, to fund something and have to quickly scramble to find the assets to uh, sell, uh, the sur surplus assets such as this and sell them at the last minute. There are many things that we need to do um, and that our property portfolio fund is there to do. Um, and it's a great big long list. And uh, you know, this is what this fund is for, and it's what it's what is needed to uh, to work on. So there's, you know, new childcare centres potentially to be built. Uh, there is um, buildings to be, you know, maintained and renovated. There is, you know, um, options here like affordable housing. There are things like the Elwood foreshore development, et cetera. So there are so many things that we could use this money for that would be much better uh, use of, a, of public money for our community that would be beneficial now. So I think the time is now to sell, uh, you know, rather on our terms rather than on somebody else's terms. So we set the market, uh, we set the price and we make sure it's on, on our terms at the right price. So I urge you, please to support this motion. So and with that, I will put the motion under division and I'll call upon each councillor for their vote. First up, Councillor Copsey. Against. Councillor Crawford. Uh, four. 
Councillor Gross? For. Councillor Pearl? Against. Councillor Simic? Against. Councillor Voss? For. Councillor Baxter? For. Councillor Bond? For. Councillor Brand? For. That motion is carried. Thank you. Item 16 is reports by councillor delegates. Councillors, do we have any reports? Councillor Pearl. Thanks, Mayor Boss. I have the honour to represent you councillors on the South Melbourne Market Board, and it's an honour I take very, very seriously. Um, these are very difficult times for the South Melbourne Market, but we celebrated a success this week with the opening of more stalls with the um, uh, relaxing in the restrictions around COVID-19. So council has gone a very long way to support traders and the operators in the South Melbourne market. And I can tell you firsthand from my almost daily visits when the market's open to the market that our traders deeply appreciate all the efforts you've taken. Um, and I think the market will be a key part of our recovery. Um, the committee is very much aware of the significant financial contribution that ratepayers from council are making to the operations of the market. Um, it, it's not done lightly and further details of that will be provided in the budget, but the committee is also very focused on the future of the market, but also ensuring that we bring the market to a sustainable financial situation. But uh, I think on behalf of traders, uh, as your committee member on that committee, uh, a huge um, amount of gratitude for the effort that um, you as councillors have made and also officers have made through this very difficult time. But a, a turning, a bit of a pivot happened this week and hopefully there's more to come in the future months. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. Would anyone else like to speak um, about, from a delegate perspective? Not tonight? Okay, so well, then we'll move on. Item 17 is urgent business. Councillors, do we have any items of urgent business? I'm not aware of any, no. And I, eight, item 18 is confidential matters. And councillors, we don't have any confidential at items tonight. So there being no further business, I declare the meeting closed. Good night.